Will these new tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles actually help save the American car industry? Here are 10 things you need to understand. Hey, I thought you guys believe in capitalism. Why you want to save these terrible companies? Or is it because they're located in swing states? It's election year. We got to talk about this, Andrew. Uh, Biden and the U.S. have just announced new tariffs on Chinese electrical vehicles up from 25% to 100%. That means the very popular BYD Seagull that comes in at 10K USD, Andrew, if it was imported, would be 20K. Imagine that, a car for $10,000. I mean, you'd have to pay at least 20,000, probably even more if the tariffs went up to that amount. But that is crazy that China is making an actual electric vehicle for even $20,000. Yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. God. So we're going to talk. I mean, there's a whole load of comments where there's a whole uh, uh, news clip that we got to play. So let's just get into it. Let's run the clip. What did you make of the Biden administration opening an investigation into smart car technology because of national security concerns that this technology was coming from China? I don't understand. It's a very confused to me because it's uh, there's no scientists uh, like it behind and there's no fa uh, like a fact behind. So and national security <laughs> concerns are overblown. Overblown, over sensitive, and a mis misleading message. Another point that she wanted to make on the national security concerns is that if you're concerned about uh, data being collected from your car, then you should also worry about your phone because chances are that phone was made in China too. So Janice, I mean, both President Biden and former President Trump have vowed to be tough on China in their next term, both claims to be tougher than the other. So what could this move from the Biden administration mean in a pivotal election year? Boom, Andrew, we got 10 points on Chinese EVs. Let's just open up number one. Let's be honest here, Andrew. Uh, I've seen the BYDs up close. I've sat in them. I've messed with the electronics. I'll tell you this. Number one, Andrew, the Chinese EVs are pretty damn good. And they're especially good on a per dollar value ratio. Right. So they're super cheap, David. Obviously, people are going to doubt possibly the quality for that price. But China's able to make these cars. Now, whether or not they're the same as other cars, the fact is they're cars that are EVs that have high tech in them for like $20,000. Yes. So long story short, China was never good at making combustion cars, but the EV drivetrains are completely different. So Andrew, they didn't have to convert their old factories into new EV factories. They went straight into new EVs. It's a little bit how like New York and Paris, Andrew, had the first subway systems in the world, but now their subway systems are super far behind. Mm. Moving on to point number two, Andrew, people possibly legitimately still have safety concerns about Chinese products. Yeah, I mean, and I will be honest, there have been defects in all companies, even Toyota. I love Toyota. Shout out to Han. I mean, shout out to Tesla. They've also had their defects. Every car brand has had defects, but I guess there have been some pretty bad stories about Chinese EVs catching on fire, doing things like that, right? Like, Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will say this. There's a lot of companies over there. I don't think you would want the worst run Chinese EV companies to be able to enter the US. But I certainly think like the top 15%, let's just say there's like 100 EV companies in China. I think it was more realistically like 40. The top 15, 20% are really solid. Right. I mean, at a time when a lot of cities are trying to minimize and lessen the amount of cars in their city, I think it's interesting like to imagine what would happen in America if people could actually buy a $15,000 high-tech EV. Right. We're talking about like screens all over the inside. However, Andrew, also a lot of people are citing, or at least the government is citing national security concerns because mm. what if the EVs are being able to be controlled by the mainframe Chinese? Yeah. No, I mean, that is, I mean, you know, it's a Chinese product. Like technically, if they wanted to sneak that in there, I guess they could, right? That is a worry. That's a worry. That's why a lot of people, sure the thing, they cut out Xiaomi, all the yeah. phones too. But the BYDs are being sold all over the EU and they're already super popular starting a few years ago in Australia. So is it like, what, those ones didn't get the drone control chipset, but the yeah. American ones are. I mean, I, honestly, any EV car could be controlled by like a drone, like, cause they're all electric. So it's like you hack the electrical Tesla's obviously can be controlled they probably could be all, all the other cars, you know? So that that is 
That is definitely a concern of uh, moving forward. Point number three, Andrew, there's a lot of argument over subsidies because people are saying that the Chinese government is subsidizing BYD. That's why the development, the R&D, that's why the seagull is so cheap. And basically that's not fair. But then on the flip side, people are saying, but throughout American history, people have subsidized different American cars, like whether it was the Chevy Volt or even the Hummer H2 was subsidized when it first came out. Yeah, you know, I don't know. To, to stimulate gas sales. Yeah, a lot of things are subsidized or at least like bailed out. You know, the automotive industry was bailed out, was essentially saved by the government. So uh, I don't know if that's a reason. If to, oh, they're cheating. I don't know if that's a good reason. That's not the best reason, in my opinion. That's not the best uh, negative. Point number four, Andrew. Uh, a lot of people are citing that China has a pretty high tariff on foreign made vehicles. So it only makes sense when America does it back. But then a lot of people were saying America stands on all these ideals. So just because China does it just like China bans TikTok, can America ban TikTok? If America is standing on those ideals that it doesn't do that type of stuff. Right. You know how, because people are always saying, well, uh, American companies are banned in China. So why don't we just ban all the Chinese companies? Yeah, I mean, that's a legit question. Listen, if you want to ask the policymakers that, but the truth is people like the products and they also make America money too. Right, and it also is in the American ethos to say, let the best man win. Right, let the best man win, except if it's from China. If it's from China, do not let the best man win. Do not let the cheapest man win. Do not let the cheapest price win, especially if it's from China. Ideals for the not for me. Point number five, Andrew, a lot of people are saying that this is a flashback to the 1990s and the early, uh, the late 1980s when everybody was like sleeping on Japan, basically thinking these Japanese tin cans, they ain't got no power. They always got them four bangers in there. And then basically the American auto manufacturers, super slow, cannot adapt. And uh, Jap Japan ended up eating up the majority of the combustion engine market now. And just like China is pretty much inevitably going to eat up the ev market mm, interesting dude isn't it so funny that it's just going to happen twice gosh well you know it's your people the people like i, I get didn't know them asians were gonna come so hard yeah i guess asians love making cars and you know what a lot of people don't know andrew even if the chinese evs i'll pop up some of them right here first of all i think they look impressive right now but even if they didn't they're gonna make them better right it's going to wow. be like the Li Ning's. The Li Ning shoes are like fire after the Wild Why are the Asian countries so good at making cars? Is it because like the manufacturing and the warehouses and stuff, they just like operate it better and cheaper? I don't know. I just think they got a lot of nerds working way harder, to be honest, and right. partying and being DJ and way less. Um, point number six, um, a lot of people are saying that it's interesting because everybody just swings stuff based on what's popular in the swing states. For example, Andrew, for a while, Biden was criticizing the tariffs that Trump put on China, saying it was contributing to inflation. Mm. But now he's upping the tariffs because it protects the auto industry in swing states that could potentially win or lose the election. Right. And that's why Trump and Biden are just like, Trump's like, uh, Biden's like, oh, I'm going to tax him. And then Trump's like, I'll tax him more. And then Biden's going to come uh, back. I'm going to tax him 60%. Biden's like, Oh, oh, I'll tax them 65%. And then Trump will be like, no, I'll tax them 78%. You know, because the political analysts are probably like, hey, guys, hey, guys, being anti-China is really playing well in this middle swing states. Let's up it up. Yeah, that's sad. It is what it is, man. I mean, this is the calculus of this is the algo at the current moment. <laughs> um, A lot of people were also blaming the U.S. car industry, Andrew, for building crappy cars that are way too big, that are way too expensive, relying on government contracts, having bloated unions that push also push the cost up to the end consumer, basically saying, isn't that funny that instead of trying to compete, you basically are keeping a useless, these all these terrible car companies making terrible cars, just pumping them, protecting them to keep them alive. Yeah, well, it's funny because in America now you have access and you can buy the best product in the world, but it might not be from America. So what are you going to do when the whole world is consuming global products. I mean, a lot of engineered stuff that's really good, it's either going to come from Germany, Japan, or Sweden, and up and coming. If you were looking for value, Korea, Taiwan, Singapore. Um, a lot of people were just talking about, man, just America in general. Why are we just trying to defend, but we're not going on the offense and actually improving our country? Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good question. Why are we afraid of global competition? It seems like America loved 
global competition when it was serving us and we were number one in almost everything. Ding, 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 ding. You love the global competition when you were at the top. But now, guess what? There's other players in the game. And now you're thinking, hey, I don't know if I like this global competition so much. Makes $3 an hour and he's got six PhDs. We can't compete with that. I can't compete with the amount of unhappiness in China. I mean, hey, listen, guys, cars are not priced on the happiness of the auto workers. I'll tell you that. Number nine, um, some people are also saying that if you actually cared about the environment and Biden says, he, you know how the Democrats are technically more green, you would let everybody in America get a cheap Chinese EV because it would help on carbon emissions. Right. But then now it just comes into basically what priorities are voters going to vote on. Mm. That is going to dictate policy. Literally, everybody just wants to stay in power. I don't know if anybody believes in anything other than maintaining power. Wow. Last but not least, Andrew, point number 10, it's all tied back to the STEM graduates. China and East Asia in general has a gigantic culture of focusing on STEM. They graduate potentially just, you know, four to 10x the amount of STEM graduates. Even the STEM graduates in America are Asian anyway. Mm. So they were just like, yeah, nobody in America cares about STEM anymore. How can it be competitive in AI and EVs? Basically, microchips, the things that are going to dictate the future of the world. Oh, I think it's twofold because I think for at least uh, auto, the automotive industry, you need a big like production line. Okay, that's different than like doing an app for AI. You just need like a room full of dudes on computers, essentially, right? But then, but you're talking about the hardcore production aspect, right? Of the design, yeah. And the production, you need, uh, you need a bunch of people still to this day, even as many robots as you have. So, are you going to use like immigrant labor? Or are you trying to use American labor? Blah blah blah. So, I think, uh, I think it's a multi-tiered problem, you know. And uh, I don't know. I'm not going to lie. So, to wrap this up. I am interested in the Chinese EVs. I am interested. Uh, aside in a few BYDs. Yeah. I'm fire. interested in them. I also am not rushing to buy like a $15,000 car. I don't think that you need the streets filled. Andrew, you're not trying to get the top of the line seagull? No, I don't know if the streets of America need to be filled up with a bunch of cheap cars. No matter what the brand. Not that I have anything against them really being from China, but I don't think we need like a million cheap ass cars on the road. So you're saying the Neos and maybe the G the Geely's or something, the higher end ones could be come in. The I mean, sure, why not? I wouldn't mind it. But of course, I guess like, yeah, I could see why America's like, uh, for a number of reasons, political, of course, is a lot of it, but just being like, you know what? I don't know if we need a bunch of $10,000 cars on our road. You know what the interesting thing is? We I have too many scooters so, already. So I have seen two BYDs, Andrew. These are Chinese cars on the roads of America. One was a transport bus, and the other one was a uh, like a hauling bus. Yeah. And so, so there's actually no consumer Chinese EVs in America yet, right. but there are like actually infrastructure vehicles. Right, right. And it is easy to import export cars from China since they drive on the same side of the road. Right. Literally, the roads are the same size as America. You drive on the right side, same rules, yeah. same everything. Whether it's in Beijing or Baltimore, it's going to be the same car. Um, I'll just say this, man. Everything ebbs and flows. I always use the analogy of America and Paris and or New York having the best subway system for, let's just say, in the world for like 30, 40, 50 years. Now New York, arguably... That's one of the worst. Whoa. So, Andrew, it went from the best to the worst and nothing changed, but that's the problem. Nothing changed. Yeah, yeah. And I think that there's a lot of people that have a lot of incentives to not rip it all down and, and build a new one. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I, listen, guys, when you have the best thing on one thing, you either got to tear, tear it apart or make incremental upgrades. And the incremental upgrades to the New York subway system weren't made. And this is where we're at right now. So anyway, guys, let us know what you think in the comments section below. What do you think of all these tariffs? What of all this protectionism? Is it good, bad? I think there's arguments on both sides. Until next time, we the Hop Hop Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.